Hello friend, welcome back to Acre Homestead. My name is Becky, if you're new, I just preheated the oven to 350 degrees because we have three cookie recipes we're making and two candy kind of dessert type things we're making. Super easy, Halloween theme because my husband is having a party at his work tomorrow and I am responsible for making all the treats for everybody. So these recipes, a lot of them aren't actually Halloween themed treats that I found online. I didn't find exactly what I wanted. Some of them are perfect, just the way they're written, and then some of them we're going to make them Halloween themed. So if you don't want them Halloween themed, just make them just how the recipes are written. The first recipe we're gonna start with is a double chocolate Halloween cookie. And this cookie uses black cocoa. This is cocoa that makes Oreos. So if you watch the video where we made Oreos and goldfish crackers together, this is the cocoa that makes Oreos, that really dark black color. Before we need the cocoa though, let's go ahead and get the butter and sugar cream together. I have butter at room temperature and I forgot to get my butter out last night. I keep my butter in the freezer. So about an hour ago, I took my butter out of the freezer and I put it in the oven with just the oven light on and now it is nice and soft. So we're gonna get that in there. And I'm gonna double this recipe because it only makes 11 to 13 cookies and I'm gonna need more than that. So we're gonna start with one cup of butter, a half cup of brown sugar, one cup of white sugar, and we're gonna mix these together. I'm gonna scrape down the sides of the bowl, give it one more mix, and then we can start adding the dry ingredients. All right, I'm gonna weigh out the dry ingredients, the flour and the cocoa. You don't have to weigh them, but I'm trying to be better about that. All of the cookie recipes we're gonna be making today do not need to be chilled. The dough doesn't need to be chilled. That was something I was looking for when I was looking for recipes. So I wanted to try to get them all done this afternoon. I can link this dark cocoa and all the recipes we're gonna be making down below. This is gonna make a mess, I can already tell. For this cocoa, we need 43 grams, and you can use this type of cocoa or just a regular cocoa, but I want that really dark color, oh, that's way too much, that you get from this cocoa. So I'm choosing to use this, and we need 43 grams. Oh no, we need 86 grams because I'm doubling the recipe. So it's gonna show you the difference between this really dark cocoa versus a regular cocoa. You can see the difference there. To this, we need to add, I'm gonna tear it, 260 grams of all-purpose flour. or two cups of all-purpose flour. One tablespoon per recipe of cornstarch, so I'm gonna put two. Two teaspoons of salt, a half teaspoon of baking powder, and one teaspoon of baking soda. And I can tell that this needs to be run through a sieve because my cocoa was pretty chunky. So I'm gonna take this off I'm gonna go ahead and sift it right into my mixing bowl. This cocoa smells like Oreos. When you think of that distinct Oreo chocolate smell, this is the cocoa you think of. So now we have all of our ingredients for our cookies in our bowl. We can go ahead and mix this up, and that was super easy. You see the color on that? That's exactly what we want. So I'm gonna scrape the ends down a little bit before we add our candies. This is our little candy section over here of all the candies we are gonna need for today's recipes. And for today's recipe, or the one we're making right now, we need these M&Ms. 
I'm gonna mix in just about three fourths. I'm gonna leave these for decorations. Maybe I'm gonna take a couple more out. Okay, that's as much mixing as I wanna do because I don't wanna break all the M&Ms. And our first cookie dough is done. But we're not quite done decorating it yet. This is where the fun part begins, the decorating, and this is gonna be one of the easiest ones we're gonna be, well, there's some other easy ones we're doing today too. I have some leftover eyeballs from last year's Halloween decorations, piece of parchment paper, and now we're ready to decorate. Oh gosh. I had a feeling I had cocoa on my cheek. Okay, I think we're good. That won't be the first cocoa on my cheek today, I'm sure. Or chocolate, because we are gonna be working with chocolate and I always tend to get chocolate all over me, but that's part of the fun. These are beautiful cookies. I'm glad I doubled this recipe because it was so easy. I don't think I'm gonna double any of the other recipes. Well, maybe I will, I don't know. Now we're gonna take our candies and I don't want the M's showing because you know what brand this is. <laughs> and I just want the cute decorations. So I'm gonna just take a second and put the random selection of M&Ms on top. And I want to have the M's going down. And you wanna do this when you're making candy coated cookies because this is the ones that are really gonna show up when they bake. And we're not just putting the M&Ms on here. This is where these cookies are gonna come to life. Some of them are gonna get two eyes, some will get one eye, some will get three eyes. These are the small eyeballs. They have larger eyeballs, but I bought these last year. I didn't even tell you all the fun things we're gonna be making today. So the first recipe, obviously we're making these monster cookies and then we are gonna make a giant peanut butter Reese's cookie. I'm adapting the recipe, you'll see how I'm gonna adapt it and it turns out fabulous. And then we're gonna make a ginger cookie and we're gonna pipe on a spider web. We're gonna make salted caramel pretzel bark and we're gonna create ghosts out of chocolate and we're gonna make nutty buddies and make ghosts out of chocolate as well for that. Into the oven, these go. These are supposed to bake for 11 to 12 minutes. So I'm gonna set the timer for 10 to check them. And while those are baking, I'm gonna go ahead and get the other monsters made up. I like to cook my cookies one at a time in the oven because I feel like they bake a little bit better that way. It takes a little bit more time, but I'm hoping that it will lend to an even better cookie in the end. I am no expert baker, but the last couple months I've been weighing my flour and as much as it's not my favorite thing to do, I'm someone who likes to just get in there and get it done and using measuring spoons is easier. I have found the quality of my baking has definitely improved by weighing the flour. Flour is one of those funny things that can compact and get dense as it sits over time. And so when you go to scoop it, it could be off by a quarter cup to a half a cup, even if you're using a one cup measure, just by whether the flour is light and fluffy or it's compacted. I haven't started weighing out my sugar yet so much because sugar doesn't compact like flour does, except for brown sugar. I probably should weigh brown sugar, but I am noticing my baking has been improved since I've been weighing flour. My timer just went off. And in the meantime, I got the other cookies all decorated. I think I'm gonna call these done. They are some of the cutest cookies I think I have ever made in a long time. I went ahead and I also rinsed off or rinsed out the bowl to the KitchenAid so we can make the next cookies. So this is what they're looking like. When I link this recipe, I will also link the larger eyeballs because I think the larger ones would be cute because they're more about the same size as the M&Ms. But I am so happy with those and I probably would probably put a couple more eyeballs on each one, at least three eyeballs on each cookie, but I am so happy with how those turned out. So easy too. We're supposed to let those cookies cool for five minutes on the rack. So that should give us just the perfect amount of time to make the next recipe. We're gonna make giant chocolate chip cookies but instead of using chocolate chips, we are gonna use Reese's Pieces because they're black, or 
brown, orange, and yellow, and that's gonna give us the fall feel. So these are more fall cookies than Halloween cookies, but I think they are gonna be really cute and complement everything else we're making. I'm not doubling this recipe because this recipe makes giant chocolate chip cookies bigger than the cookies I just made. And I'm gonna make the cookies the same size I just made, so we should get about the same number of cookies. So we're gonna start with one cup of butter. To the butter, we're gonna add one and one fourth cup of brown sugar, three fourths cup of white sugar, Now we're gonna weigh out our flour. We need three cups of all-purpose flour. I'm tearing the bowl, or 380 grams of flour. We're gonna call that good. I'm gonna start beating the sugar together, and I'm gonna go ahead and measure out the rest of the dry ingredients. We need a fourth teaspoon of baking soda, and one teaspoon of baking powder. Oh, I forgot to add salt. Now I'm gonna add half or three-fourths of our Reese's Pieces. I'm gonna mix that just like that, and I'm gonna call that good so that we do not break all the Reese's Pieces. Second cookie dough, done. Before we can put our cookies onto this cookie sheet, we need to get these on the cooling rack. And I cannot get over how cute these cookies are. I think that really dark cocoa with the bright M&Ms is just absolutely adorable. The crazy thing about them is they smell exactly like Oreos because they have that Oreo cocoa in them. So I'm just gonna reuse this parchment paper and the recipe is called giant chocolate chip cookies. So you're supposed to measure out a quarter of a cup, but I don't want these to be giant because I'm bringing them to a party. So I'm just gonna use the same size cookie scoop. They're still gonna be decent sized cookies, but I'll just need to adjust the cooking time from 15 to 20 minutes. I'm gonna start with 10 minutes and I will check them at that point. But now I know I should have put, oh, that's my timer. Just a few more M&Ms on the outside. So on these next cookies, I'm gonna load them up with the Reese's peanut butter cups, or Reese's pieces, not Reese's peanut butter cups. This was my go-to candy when I was younger, when we would go to the movie theater, Reese's Pieces. I haven't actually eaten them in years. I haven't even been to the movie theater in years. That used to be when we were in high school, my friends and I's favorite thing. We would go to the movies and then we would go to this dessert restaurant that was in Portland and we would get a fancy dessert and French fries. That's how we spent our Fridays and Saturdays in high school. Okay, so I'm gonna put like four, three to four on the outside. And these don't have markings on them, so I don't have to try to put the M side down or anything like that. These would be good too with chocolate chips and Reese's Pieces, but we're just doing Reese's Pieces today. That's too much orange on that one. Let's switch it up. So the decorations on these cookies, this is the decorations, but the next cookie we're gonna be making, the ginger snap, we are going to be piping a spider web on it. And I'm really excited about it. I just came up with that idea and I'm really, <laughs> I wanna see if it's gonna work. I don't know if it's gonna work. These have already gone to my husband's work and I only got two cookies back. So if that tells you anything, these recipes were a huge hit and I will definitely be making all of them again. These first two recipes can't come from a blog that I found recently, and I think I've made like five or six of her cookie recipes, and she has a cookbook. I'm gonna link her cookbook down below, and I just purchased her cookbook because I want to make a bunch of her recipes at Christmas when I do a bunch of my Christmas baking. 
her recipes are written a little bit different than I've seen most cookies recipes written. A lot of them call for cornstarch or bread flour or cream cheese, and they've all been turning out so fabulous. So I trust her enough to purchase her cookbook. I'm not a huge cookbook purchaser, but I'm really excited to get her cookbook. Now, I did have a few extra of each of these recipes. You can see here, I, I baked two sheets worth of each recipe, and then any extra, instead of baking a third sheet and going through that process, we have no cookie dough in our freezer right now. I had gifted all the cookie dough that I made during the freezer meal to my sister-in-law so that when she's postpartum, she can have some cookies on hand. And so I thought I would go ahead and just keep the extras in our freezer so when we need a treat, I can bake those up. That's perfect timing. That's the timer for these cookies. These look great. They're golden brown around the outside, but still really nice and soft on the inside. I want them to be soft. That's how I like my cookies. Get these ones in. We're gonna let these cookies cool on this cookie rack, so we're, or baking sheet, and they'll finish cooking on this cookie sheet and then we'll transfer them. But now we've got 10 minutes, we can make the ginger cookies. This next recipe is a chewy spiced cookie, so kind of like a chewy ginger snap, and it's supposed to be really flat, so that's why I thought that this one would be a good one to pipe a spider web on it. I thought it would be really cute, and the fall flavors just kind of lend to this time of year, and then we'll try to decorate it for the party. So here we got, and you can see I did a prototype on the recipe. That's what hopefully my spider web will kind of look like when we get to that point. But we can't get to that point until we bake these cookies. So the first thing we need to do is put one cup of butter into our mixing bowl. To that, we are gonna add 3 fourths cup of white sugar, 3 fourths cup of brown sugar, and this needs to beat for two minutes, two to three minutes on high, it says. So while this is beating, we can weigh out our flour and the spices we need for this recipe. Here we are weighing out the dry ingredients. So we're gonna weigh out flour, baking soda, salt, and all the spices. This has quite a few spices in it. And I just wanted to mention, we're gonna talk about the scale again. I used to think using a scale in baking was a chore and I'm learning to appreciate the value of it and that it's worth it because if you're already gonna spend time in the kitchen doing whatever it might be, I'm learning this with canning and with gardening that you know it's already effort to get in there and do it. You're already gonna to have to clean the kitchen. I might as well take that little bit of extra effort and try to improve it just as much. But when we're first learning, sometimes it's a matter of just getting there and learning, but the more comfortable you are, then you can start building on that skill. I'm gonna get some fresh nutmeg in here, and then I'm gonna add a little extra ginger. I just used the last of my brown sugar that I had in this container, and I have some more right here. So I'm gonna refill this. This brown sugar, I normally make all my brown sugar from scratch, but I've been buying, I bought two of these bags at Costco, and they don't stay fresh. And so I have had this brown sugar bear, and I'm finally pulling it out with you right now. So I just read the directions. I've never used one of these before. This was a gift from a friend because I was telling my friend how much struggles I was having with this brown sugar. And it says to soak this bear in clean water for 20 minutes, pat dry, and then we're gonna put it into our brown sugar. So I'm going to fill up my brown sugar, get the lid on it, get this in my drawer, because. Don't think we need brown sugar for anything else for today. And then we'll get this soaking and then we can put it in here, but I need the lid for my brown sugar. The timer went off for these. 10 minutes seems to be perfect for this size cookie. So they still look a little underdone, but they finished baking up perfectly. So what I like to do is pound my cookies on the counter and then we're gonna let them finish cooking. And you can see here, how well they cooked up. So they're gonna be nice, soft, and chewy. That's how Josh and I like our cookies. One thing I've been struggling with lately with cookie baking has been getting my cookies to flatten out. And I think it's because I've been using a measuring spoon and not weighing out because those cookies, both of them are looking beautiful. 
they're flattening out. And I think the weighing the flour, as much as it is not my favorite thing to do, I think it makes a big difference in cookie baking. So now that we've got our butter sugar fluffed, I just added one egg. And that's all that this recipe calls for is one egg, but it does call for vanilla, just like any good recipe. I still don't weigh out my vanilla or measure out my vanilla. I do measure that with love because I tend to put more vanilla than the recipe calls for. So we're gonna get that in there. And then we do need to, because this is a ginger cookie, we need to add molasses. We need to add a quarter cup. And what I'm gonna do to make this come out of the measuring spoon easier, let's see, where'd my quarter cup go? I know I had one out earlier, it's right here. I just bought this new spray bottle of avocado spray and I, I broke the top off, so that's a joy. Okay, so now I've got this sprayed so that my molasses will come out easier. I just reread my recipe to make sure I'm not forgetting anything because I kind of had a little bit of a, a detour in the middle of this recipe. But we've got everything except for I'm gonna add a little extra ginger to make it a little extra spiced. Okay. Let me show you how well it comes out when you See that? Basically all of it comes out easy peasy. So there's our molasses. That's a little extra ginger. Josh and I love chocolate chips in our ginger snaps. So this would be a good recipe if you wanted to make it a little festive to put Christmas M&Ms in it, which is what I've done before in this type of cookie, or you could do the Halloween ones, but chocolate and ginger go really well together. And that's our cookie dough. So we've got our three cookie doughs done, two of them baked, and then we get to make our candies next. And then we get to decorate these cookies, which I'm really looking forward to. I almost forgot that we need to roll these cookies in a sugar mixture. And the recipe says to do cinnamon and sugar. I think I'm just gonna do sugar since I'm gonna be piping a decoration on. We're just gonna mix or roll the cookie in the sugar. I'm using the same cookie scoop, so they'll all should be relatively about the same size as they when they bake up. I'm gonna put these in for 10 minutes to start with and then we'll check them. A couple other things that have really made me enjoy baking more in the kitchen is cookie scoops and these extra large baking sheets. It took me, I think five years after my husband and I were married to finally invest in two cookie scoops and these extra large baking sheets. And I do not regret the purchases whatsoever. They have been well worth the investment. They make baking more enjoyable because I'm able to get more in the oven at one time and I can be a little bit more efficient with both cooking, scooping out the cookie dough and baking them in the oven. So here I decided instead of scooping the cookies, rolling them in the sugar individually, it would be faster to scoop them all out, roll them all, and then take the time to roll them in the sugar. 
So these are the extra ginger ones. I'm gonna go in the freezer for Josh and I for later use, and then we will go ahead and bake these ones up. These do spread quite a bit, so they do need a little bit of space. And I do take a minute to push down the cookie dough, and I'm gonna to explain to you why I decided to do this, even though it wasn't in this recipe. I wasn't sure if these were gonna flatten well, even though the recipe said they would. And so I took, halfway through the baking process, I went and I flattened some, and then some I didn't. And I like the way that the ones, you can see the difference, I flattened cooked up versus the ones I didn't. So this round of cookies, I went ahead and flattened all of them. So 10 minutes was perfect. I'm gonna get these in here. I'm gonna clean up a little bit and then we can start decorating. Before we can start decorating, I actually want to go ahead and make the salted caramel chocolate pretzel bar because we're gonna decorate that too. And so I need that done and hardened so we can put little ghosts on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish cleaning up and then we will get that done. Oop. So I was rereading this caramel recipe, salted caramel and pretzel bite recipe. It's, it's really straightforward and easy. The only thing is I could not find the craft caramel bites when I ran to the store this morning. I could only find the whole caramels. So I'm gonna cut those. And then we need just regular pretzels, chocolate chips, and that's it. But, but then the recipe doesn't say to put the little ghosts on the top, but I saw a video on how to make these ghosts and the person put them on brownies, but I wanna put them on these bars. But it doesn't say what size baking sheet. It just says line a large rim baking sheet. I don't know how large a large rim baking sheet is. I'm guessing this size is a large rim baking sheet. We're not gonna bake it or anything. We just need to make the bars in it. And then let's see, I need to weigh out because I only have bulk chocolate chips. So it says eight ounces of chocolate to start with. And I had it on grams, but now I need it on ounces. This does not have to be exact, exact because we're not baking it. So I have eight and a half ounces in here and that's gonna be okay. So I'm gonna start with 30 seconds, let it melt, mix it 30 seconds until it's completely melted. I can already see I like the way that these cookies look much better after flattening them because that's gonna be a perfect canvas for our little cobwebs or spider webs or whatever you wanna call it. Speaking of, these are done. We can turn the oven off because we don't need that anymore. So here I have all the chocolate nice and melted. You wanna be careful when you use the microwave if you're not using a double boiler not to burn it, but you can use the microwave for sure as long as you just keep a close eye on it. You don't wanna set it and forget it. This would make a really good Christmas dessert too, I think, because you could make a huge pan of it. This doesn't seem like very much chocolate. And I'm not sure how thin to spread it because it doesn't say what size baking sheet. But I'm supposed to put that whole bag of pretzels on it, so I would imagine. I think that's as thin as I'm gonna get it. Maybe I should do more thinner. That it's okay if they're overlapped. We're gonna top this with caramel and more chocolate. So if they're, I guess if they're not completely stuck on the bottom, they'll have an opportunity to get stuck together from what we're gonna put them on the top. I still have half a bag. I don't think there's any way I could get any more pretzels on here. So we're gonna go with that amount of pretzels and we will melt the caramel on the top. To the caramels, it says to add two tablespoons of water. And we're gonna melt these in the microwave just like we did our chocolate in 30 second intervals. These might take a little bit longer to melt than the 
bites because they're bigger. I've never done this before where I've melted these craft caramels before and I was doubting the process, but I think it's gonna work. It looks a little bit odd, but I, well, we'll see. <laughs> I think it might work though. It smells good. Friend, I think that worked. I let the residual heat melt the rest of it. It wasn't quite melted, but just like when I melt chocolate, I didn't want it to burn. So now I'm going to pour this over the pretzels. Okay, it cools very, very quickly, but yet it's extremely hot still. I weighed out some more chocolate. I actually weighed out, it said four ounces, but I think we need more. I think I would have doubled the chocolate the recipe called for. And I'm gonna go melt this to put on the top. I got the chocolate all melted and I'm going to drizzle this on the top. I was hoping it would be a little bit more drizzly. I probably should have added a little bit of coconut oil, but the recipe did not say to do that. So it's not super drizzly, but we'll make this work. I think it's gonna be very cute. I don't wanna spread it, because I don't want that look. I want it to be a little bit, you know, haphazard and random. Perfect, okay, I think that's it other than the decorations, but we still have to make the decorations. The recipe does say to put crunchy sea salt on the top. I don't have crunchy sea salt that I wanna use for this, so we're just gonna have the salt from the pretzels be the salt aspect of this recipe. I'm gonna go pop this in the freezer, and then we're gonna make our Nutty Buddies, and we can use our same bowl we just melted this chocolate with, and then we'll get the white chocolate out, make our ghosts, and make our spider webs. I can't even remember the last time I made Nutty Buddies. I'm really excited about these because we're gonna use these white chocolate pretzels and we're gonna put little eyes on it and make little ghosts with the little white chocolate pretzels. So in this bowl that we just used, the first time I ever made these was in high school. We had a home ec class and it was so fun. We made Nutty Buddies and I absolutely have loved them ever since. My mom didn't make these growing up, so it's not something that was traditional in our house. I'm gonna start with one cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips and a half a cup of peanut butter. If it's not exact, exact, that's okay. That looks like about a half a cup there. To this, we're gonna add a quarter cup of butter, which is a half a stick. We're gonna pop this in the microwave and we're gonna get all these melted together. Once this is all melted together, we're going to measure out our checks. And when I was at the store this morning picking up the checks, I don't even know if one box is enough for one recipe. And I'm following the recipe on the back of the box. I think shrinkflation has hit cereal boxes pretty heavily. Almost there. This is gonna melt a lot quicker than just the chocolate because it's got the peanut butter and the butter which has a lower melting point than the chocolate itself. While that's finishing melting, I'm going to measure out one and a half cups of powdered sugar into a Ziploc bag. Now the recipe says to use a two gallon Ziploc bag. I don't have that, so we're just gonna make a one gallon work. This doesn't look fully melted, but by the time the residual heat is stirred in, this will be totally melted. Now we need to measure out nine cups of checks. But first I'm gonna go ahead and just put a splash of vanilla in here and a pinch of salt. 
recipe doesn't call for salt, but anytime I make anything sweet, I like to add a little bit of salt to balance the flavor. This is my bag of checks. Oh, well, now we probably really don't have nine cups of checks. My dog is eating the checks that I just flung on the floor. I think I'm just gonna put this whole bag in there. may have to pull out another bag and do this in two bags and that'll be okay if I do. But this might help having this bag holder here. Oop. I think we may have just done it. Now can we mix it up with the powdered sugar? That is the question. A two gallon bag would definitely work a lot better for this, but just working with what I got here. Oh yeah, this'll work. There are our nutty buddies. I'm gonna set these aside and let them dry while we make our little ghosts. We are finally at the part that I have been looking forward to this whole time. I have some white chocolate chips here and we're gonna melt those just in this bowl. We're gonna use these white chocolate chips for three different things. So I'm just gonna put, I don't know. That's, I guess I can tell you because there's a thing on here. I'm putting almost three cups of chocolate chips in here. That's I'm trying to think through. I think that's probably too much. Let's do two cups. Because once they're melted, you can't really use them for anything if you put too much out. Okay, so we're gonna melt those and we are going to put some of the chocolate in a Ziploc bag to make the spider webs, which is what I'm the most looking forward to. Plus we are gonna turn these pretzels into ghosts and we need the white chocolate for that as well. So I need to put the pretzels, ah, okay, those are broken. I only want the full pretzels. Well, I guess I could use some of these ones that, and then we're gonna make ghost as well. Not using the pretzels. I now have my melted white chocolate, and the first thing we're gonna do is make our little ghosts on this part of this parchment. And I watched a video online about this, and I don't know if I saved it, so I have to kind of remember how to do it. They just took, from what I remember, some white chocolate that was melted, put it on some parchment, pushed it, and went like that. That's actually working. So that's the little ghost. Okay, that's, I want them a little bit smaller, I think. I'm using these to decorate that bark, so I don't need a ton of them. Okay, that's probably enough of them. Uh, maybe I'll do a couple more. Now that I have my cute little ghosts, we are gonna put eyes on them in just a minute. We are gonna start doing our spider webs. I 
I am no chocolatier. I did find when doing this, it's best if you have a smaller hole in your baggie than a bigger one, just because you get more fine tuned decorations. And it did help if I picked up the cookie to decorate because I had a little bit more control, but you'll see, I try a bunch of different ways and some of them turn out better than others. I just had the thought as I was sitting here watching this, if you didn't end up putting the cross sections on, this, I don't know what that's called for the spider web. I'm sure it has a name, but you could at Christmas time do the same recipe with white chocolate and make little, instead of spider webs, you could make snowflakes and you could even decorate them with some sprinkles. If you had some shimmer sprinkles, some white sprinkles or red and white sprinkles, whatever, you know, Christmas sprinkles you have. I was just thinking that would be super cute as well. And then we're going back to our ghosts and we are gonna have our little ghosts come to life. We are gonna use these same little eyeball candies and I think the swoosh ghosts are some of the cutest things I have made in a long time. I saw this idea originally on a reel and the person that did this, instead of putting them on the bark like I'm going to do, they put them on individual brownies and I think they were even store-bought brownies. So if you need a really quick festive dessert, Go pick up a box of store-bought round brownies and make some of these ghosts and you will have the cutest thing at the party. I'm gonna go pop our little ghosts into the freezer so they can harden up real quick. They're almost hard, so it won't take very long. I have some more white chocolate in here because we have one more set of the spiced cookies to do. And I just pulled this out because we're gonna be putting the little white ghosts onto our pretzel bark. Actually, I think I might be able to fit this in my inside freezer, let's see. Oh yeah. All right, so we just have a few more spider webs to put on and they look really sloppy like this, but I think once I pick up the cookie and break off the, the sloppy parts, I think they look really cute. I mean, I'm no chocolatier expert decorator, but I think, I think you get the drift, the gist that that's a spider web on there. I'm gonna get a new piping bag out because once you've used it once, it kind of, that's all it'll give you. So we're gonna get this melted. I've never attempted to do any sort of tempering chocolate or anything like that. Chocolate is very intimidating to me. So this is about as much chocolatering as I am comfortable with at this point in my culinary adventures. We're almost there. Actually, yeah, I'll give it just 10 seconds more. I wanna see if I can cut an even smaller hole because I think that would be, there we go. I think I'm gonna get a more delicate spider web if I have less chocolate coming out. Oh yeah, that's better. I tried a bunch of different ways to figure out what the best way was, and I think picking them up gave me the most control, but you can see I just went to town on it. You know, in nature, spider webs are all different. They all look different depending on you know, say someone walked through it and half the spider web isn't even there. So I just had fun with my creative liberties getting the white chocolate on these cookies. The white chocolate combination with the spiced cookie was fabulous. The moment I have been waiting for this whole time is to put these cute little ghosts onto our bark. So I'm just gonna put some glue
These little ghosts would be super cute on these cookies as well, instead of the spider webs. I got a couple extra. These are hardened too, so we can get these into our Nutty Buddies. I think though this is one of the cutest things <laughs> I've ever made. I'm gonna serve the Nutty Buddies in this bowl. And I think how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna put half of it in here. And then I'm gonna put some of these little ghosts in there so that they're layered. We have all of the candies and cookies done. So now what I'm gonna do is plate everything up and get it ready to go so that Josh can just take it to work tomorrow. I'm thinking for these monster cookies, I'm gonna put them on this white plate because they'll stand out so well because the cookies, this is where you can really see just how incredibly dark these cookies are because of that cocoa powder we used. And they smell so good they smell like an Oreo. But if you wanted to make these, this was the only recipe I doubled and I'm glad I did because this seems like a good amount of cookies for, with all the other things that we brought for Josh's work. So there's the first thing. I have the spider webs in the refrigerator so that the chocolate can harden up so that we can get those plated as well. I've got this glass dish that I'm gonna put these Reese's cookies on, and these are just like a nice fall cookie. They don't have to be Halloween per se. Oop, dropped one. Okay, there's recipe number two. Here is our spooktacular, and I think this is the cutest thing I've probably made in a really long time. This is our pretzel bark with chocolate and pretzels and caramel and ghosts. We have our monster cookies with our eyes and our Halloween M&Ms. We have our ginger chewy cookies with our spider webs. These are the chocolate cookies, chocolate chip cookies basically, but with Reese's peanut pieces instead of chocolate chips or M&Ms. And then we have our Nutty Buddies with our little ghosts in them. So I'm gonna get all of these covered up and I'll probably end up having Josh put it in his car tonight. I'll bring Josh a knife so that he can, or I'll give Josh a knife to bring to work tomorrow so he can cut this into pieces, but I want people to be able to see the cute little ghosts. How fantastic was that? We got all five recipes done. Sometimes I shoot for the moon and I don't quite get there, but today we got all the recipes done. Hopefully Josh's coworkers will enjoy this. This is gonna be a fun thing for them, hopefully when they have their party tomorrow to be able to feast on some yummy treats. So I'll get it all packaged up, a couple layers of saran wrap so it'll be safe in transit for Josh's commute to work tomorrow. And I am so thrilled with the results. So friends, thank you so much for hanging out with me in the kitchen so I wasn't alone doing all of this. It was much more fun having you along with me while I was in the kitchen. And if you enjoyed this and you wanna see how I made or attempted to make Oreos, and goldfish crackers, I can put that video right here. And then if you wanna watch another one of my holiday baking videos, I can put that here as well. So you can enjoy those between now and my next upload. If you are new around here, please consider subscribing. We do a lot of baking, cooking, gardening, food preservation, and just all the things around the house. So thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. The recipes will be linked down in the description box. And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye friend.